So I made this video a while ago talking about my decision to not go to college and pursue a career in the music industry, and it seemed like most people really enjoyed it. And this year, just like last year, I received the same questions from some of my students asking, Sam, should I go to college for music? Should I go to college not for music? Or should I even go to college at all? So most of the time, I just kind of send them that video where I just give them the exact same answers that I said in that video, because I still stand by most of my thoughts on that. But this year, I got a lot of people asking, well, what about the college experience? So today, I want to make a video focusing more on what I think I've gained or what I've missed out on by not going to school. So to start, my family has always kind of said that they feel sorry for me because they don't think that I gained a lot of the life skills that you might get when you go to college. Things like how to navigate around a campus, time management, handling relationships, new responsibilities. I think it's actually a decent argument for college, especially if you're going to a school that's a little bit farther away and not so easily accessible to just get home immediately. It's a pretty safe space to learn some of these things. And I'm particularly street stupid. Uh, I love books, but I've probably almost been kidnapped about five times because I generally lack those life skills. But Nothing has given me more experience in those life skills than traveling for tour or for writing trips. For example, I think about when I was 18 and the first time I ever went out to LA without any other adults was with Concrete Castles to start writing for our first album. So it's me and two other fresh adults that have also never really done this before, traversing an airport by ourselves without any help. And that's actually not that big of a deal, but I'd say that the first time you're doing it on your own, it can be a little bit nerve wracking. Thankfully in this case, it actually all went smoothly, but we've had plenty of experience where we've had thousands of dollars worth of gear put on the wrong plane or just lost altogether. And then you get to have that really fun life experience where you get to talk to airlines. So we land at LAX and we get an Uber to our place, which isn't that big of a deal. I wouldn't consider that a crucial life skill, but it's definitely a learning curve. And if you've landed in LAX before, you know that sometimes those drivers aren't actually drivers. It can be a little sketchy and you have to know who not to get in the car with. So we get to the Airbnb at about 1 a.m. We have no idea which one is actually ours because it's too dark to tell. The Uber has just left and the Airbnb host is asleep. So it's time to shine some flashlights and just hope that people don't think that we're breaking into their homes. So the next day, our manager treated us out to some dinner and some ice cream. And at the end of the night, he went home. I mean, he went to go be with his family. And then it's just the three of us standing there thinking, well, what are we supposed to do? Do we go home now? Before we could even make up our mind though, a helicopter flies over the plaza that we were just eating ice cream in, and like five SWAT members just jump down from the sky and run into a store with their hands on their waist. Apparently there was some sort of burglary happening like 50 feet away from us. So we quickly get another Uber out of that area because we're Uber experts at this point. And we get the courage to actually ask our Uber driver, who's an adult, what's the craziest thing that's ever happened to you? To which he replied with a very detailed recounting of the time that he was sexually assaulted on the job. So anyway, <laughs> we get back to our place and we realize that we have to buy groceries. We don't want to keep spending money on Uber, so we decide that we're going to walk. So after about an hour and a half of walking to get the ingredients, we get back and we realize that none of us particularly know how to cook. So it's time to learn. That was probably one of the most informative traveling experiences I've ever had. I also recall this story just to point out some things that might happen to a first year college student that I found to be pretty valuable experiences. Not because anything really went wrong, but because everything that I hadn't really thought about before when I was traveling with adults just seemed so much more difficult. I mean, I hadn't really considered them. My brain was just kind of turned off in the past. And every time we traveled after that, things just got a lot easier. I think the most obvious difference I noticed between being a full-time musician and a full-time college student is that on a college campus, there seems to be a little bit more safety regulations put into place for people like me who aren't particularly street smart. For example, there's usually more than two other people your age around you trying to answer the questions that you have, including a lot of adults. I've also seen some safety stations on college campuses that will automatically call the authorities to your location if you're in danger. Food is also usually offered to students on campus, at least to some degree, and there's usually meal plans to suit everybody's dietary restrictions. Some schools also have shuttles that will take you around campus for transportation. If you go to a really highbrow school, the shuttle driver probably won't unveil their deeply embedded trauma to you. So I wouldn't particularly say that I missed out on the life skills aspect of going to college. I would say if anything, it was actually enhanced, especially by touring, which I'm gonna get to in a second. If there's one element of the college experience that I didn't get though, that would probably be partying. To be honest, I don't really like parties, and if any of you have seen any of my other videos, you might know that I don't drink or do drugs or anything like that, and unfortunately, a lot of the parties that I've been to are kind of like centered around that, but it is important to mention that if you don't go to college, you might miss out on that aspect of things, and just because I don't particularly like them does not mean that everybody doesn't like them. In my experience, being kind of a hustling musician is not like the sex, drug, and rock and roll shit that you see in movies. Maybe on like one off day that you have, you can go out. Most of the time, anybody who's drinking is just doing it in the parking lot of a venue in nowhere near. Mexico before their show. Now, don't get me wrong, some bands absolutely party. Very hard, in fact, but it's just never been my personal experience that really bands that we tour with have the time to do that. Something that you might not experience as much if you decide to not go to college is expanding your interests. 
And I mean, in music, there are ways to expand your interests. You can get into writing, production, live sound, touring, managing, but you're not gonna discover your hidden love for geology playing guitar for a living. That's definitely something I'll give a point to for like the liberal arts education stuff. My brother would have never discovered that. He wanted to be a biologist if he wasn't forced to take a class in it. So if you're somebody that's lacking a little bit of confidence in what you think you wanna do with your life, college can maybe be a little helpful to just allow you to shop around those different interests. I would say that the networking in college is also a little bit more diverse. Again, if you know you wanna do music, this doesn't really matter. Networking in music is the most powerful thing I've ever seen. Everybody knows everybody, but you're a little bit less likely to run into a software engineer or a lawyer or something like that if you're networking in music. Another point that I'll give to school is introducing me to a lot more friends through athletics. I've probably met a lot more friends through athletics than I have through music. It was really one of the best decisions I ever made with my life. So in that sense, I am kind of gonna miss out on a lot of the friends that I could have potentially made. I don't know if this is necessarily like a pro for college, but I know more people in the music industry who have met their long-term significant other in school than they have in music. I know this video is about the college experience, but I want to touch on the financial aspect for just a second. Everyone's experience is a little bit different, of course, but I feel like the benefits that I've received being in the music industry is a much better deal when you consider how expensive the price of an education is. Because I've said before that I would consider going back to school one day if it made sense, and part of that equation of it making sense is to financially make sense. It can cost a lot to be a college student, and ironically, for the price you pay, the stereotype of like a college student is always eating ramen noodles and not having disposable income and being really tired and sleep deprived and overworked, but still having a good time somehow. That kind of leads me into what I want to talk about with touring. I wouldn't say that touring usually is a very luxurious lifestyle, but it teaches you a lot. And just like college, you should do it with some purpose. You shouldn't just do it because you have nothing better to do. It definitely includes some late nights, some insufficient sleep, and if you don't have another passive stream of income, it could be pretty unkind to your bank account but you do it because it's a push for a larger goal. Similar to college, you look forward to sleeping in your own bed and just having a home-cooked meal eventually. But the hustle isn't for nothing. You know that it's a sacrifice now to hopefully set yourself up better in the future. Before I decided to go full-time into music, my dream program was this Harvard Berkeley dual degree program, where basically it combined the two ideas of being a full-time student and a full-time musician. You were essentially a full-time enrolled student at Harvard, but you also got to take lots of classes at Berkeley, and you also got admission to Berkeley's master's program. I thought it was like the perfect middle ground. I mean, I wanted the college experience and the education, but I also wanted to tour on the weekends and live in studios and network with other musicians. I got into Berkeley, but I got waitlisted at Harvard, and I think that that was probably for the best, because if I'd gotten in, I probably would have taken the opportunity and I wouldn't have done first to 11 or concrete castles. So I guess now it's kind of like, where did we land? Are we upset about missing out on the college experience? Are we upset about not going to school for music? Are we going to school for music? Well, firstly, I think it's a little unfair to have an 18 year old make that decision for themselves at such a young age, especially without the appropriate amount of time to just think things through. I was and still am a f***ing idiot. I don't even know if I should be allowed to make decisions for myself at 23. So if you're in a position where you still really love school, but you also kind of want a career in the music industry one day, maybe it's worth asking yourself, who do I want to be networking with? How much do I want to be expanding my horizons? How much do I care about partying? I mean, these aren't the only things to consider, obviously, but I think they're important enough to bring into the equation. If those things are extremely important to you and the cost of getting an education isn't crippling, well then maybe you'd be smart to go to school. If they aren't that important to you and maybe the cost of education is extremely high for somebody in your position, then maybe you take a second to think about your other options. Another option I don't hear a lot of students talking about is deferring their admission. So if your school permits it, maybe you just do music for a year, defer your education, see how it goes. A lot of people say they shouldn't do that because it's gonna make you not wanna go back back to school, but part of me thinks if it's just one year that's going to be the make or break between you going through the entire process and maybe you didn't want to go that badly in the first place and you got the answer to your question. The important distinction about deferring your admission though is that you should definitely have a game plan going into it. I knew when I deferred my admission originally, which ended up being forever obviously, that First to 11 was off the ground, we had a bunch more covers scheduled, we have other revenue streams starting, Concrete Castles had a rollout for album one, all these things were kind of in the oven already. So I wouldn't say that I took the year off just for the sake of it. I don't think that the college experience only exists in college, and I certainly don't think that gaining life experience only exists in college. I would say that it maybe is a safer route, but it is certainly not the only route. I hope this video has helped anybody who's deciding between going to school and giving it a real shot in the music industry. I've definitely enjoyed my time so far, and I'd be happy to coach anybody who's still trying to make that hard decision. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment any future videos you'd like to see down below.